Chapter 4. Out of the shadows come deeper mysteries. The shadows move slowly, soundlessly, encircling the children, drawing closer and closer with each rotation. The children bunched together as tightly as they could. At first they had screamed, but that had only made the shadows come nearer, so they had again fallen silent. They watched one another's faces, stiffened with fear in the dim lantern light. How could they defend themselves against these unnatural things? What would Omrick have done? The oldest boy, the eldest boy, tall William, the first son of old William, opened the vent in his lantern and held it high. But the spidery shadows grew longer, reaching for the mass of children even more menacingly, as if challenging the light. I thought that would help, he said, puzzled, trying to sound brave. He closed the lantern's vents. Perhaps if we run, suggested another boy. No, cried Catherine. We must stay together. Look, something's coming. She pointed to teeny lights that were beginning to dot the forest around them. Fireflies, in numbers too vast to calculate. They swarmed forth and attacked the shadows like luminous darts released from an invisible bow. Moments later, the birds, the reindeer, and nearly every creature in the forest joined them. Then the trees began to swing their branches. The vines lashed out like whips. But how can a shadow be fought? The shadows splintered apart, but since they were shadows, they instantly came together again, taking new forms. They snapped and crushed the vines and hurled the forest defenders as if they were leaves in the wind. Undaunted, the forest army fought desperately on, rising repeatedly to protect the children. Still, the shadows slipped past them and began to envelop the children in a blanket of darkness. The older children immediately draped themselves over the younger ones in a last effort to protect them. And where is the bear? Surely the bear will help us, they thought, as the inky blackness flooded over them. Then out of the night sped something swift and bright, something that moved almost too quickly to be seen. It was brighter than fire, and the shadows cowered, and then there was laughter, the bright laughter of mischief. And in a single perfect moment, the children saw what looked to be a sprite-like boy, holding a staff with a brilliant moonlit glow at its end. He seemed to glisten like beads of light. He stood calmly amidst the, shat the chaos, his laughter bringing forth swirls of mist that hovered in the air. Then, in an instant, he blurred into a hundred shafts of refracting light that came together around the children like a protective cone, driving back the shadowy blanket. Then he blistered out in all directions, driving back every shadowy creature that could be seen. When the shadows vanished, so did the, mis the spectral boy, leaving behind only a breeze of misty laughter that drifted over the woods like an echo. The children stood up slowly. The forest creatures righted themselves. As the boys and girls looked around in unstunned disbelief, they saw their parents and Umbric approaching from the edge of the forest. For once in this town where surprise was the order of the day, no one knew quite what to say about what they had just seen. Even Umbric was rendered momentarily speechless, but the wizard now understood what they were all about to face. I suggest, given the current events, that the safest place for the children to sleep this night is Big Root, he said finally. An ancient evil has awakened, and I must tell you more. Come. And before anyone could agree or not, the wizard threw open his cloak and transported them all to the tree.